My recent video about how to fine tune GPT-3 and build an AI startup in a few minutes got a lot of questions about the nitty gritty details on how you can actually do this fine tuning process. Rather than try to answer you all in the comments, I thought I'd pop back on here and make a quick video showing you the step-by-step -step process of how to go from data to prompting completions to a fine tuned model that you can interact with. I'm gonna be breaking it down a lot more granularly in this video and going A to Z on how any beginner can come in and use data to fine tune it and get a fine tuned version of GPT-3 to use for their own purposes. If you're an entrepreneur and are looking to start making money and building businesses in the AI gold rush, you need to be aware of how these fine tuned processes work so this video is exactly what you're going to need to learn to get to a basic level of understanding so that you can move forward and start hiring people and know what the process is and be alert and aware of what's going on so we're going to jump back in here where we left off with the NBA players performance data set I'm going to do this all again so we're starting off by downloading the data set links to this will be in the description below fine-tuning these models is one of the biggest opportunities in business of 2023 and I'd say for the next few years because of the power of these models and being able to build on top of them one of the most powerful skills that you can have as an entrepreneur right now is understanding how this process works so that you can start to see opportunities where you can apply data to these models and build a valuable business. So don't go anywhere. I'm going to be going step by step explaining this whole process and you're not going to want to miss any of it. Enough talk, let's get stuck into it. A quick overview of this process from start to finish. To start off, we need to find a set of data, which in this case, we're using the NBA players performance data from my previous video. Then we're going to take that data and create prompt and completion pairs, which is the format that we need to provide to GPT-3 in order to fine tune it. And finally, we're going to be able to run a basic app on our computer that is a fine tuned version of GPT-3 that understands this data that we're fed to it. To start off, we're going to download the NBA player performance data from Kaggle. The data set link will be in the description. Next, we're going to import this data to Google Sheets so that we can manipulate it a bit. We have an index row here on the left that we can remove. And I'm just going to put a filter on this so that we can remove the blanks as I did in the previous video. Copy this, create a new sheet and paste it in. Now we have it all formatted nicely and compact and ready to go. We're just going to download this data in a CSV format and then open it in uh, Visual Studio Code so we can have a look at it. Now what you need to do is head over to v Visual Studio Code or your favorite code editor. What I'm going to do here, it's already opened up, but just to help you guys out, I'm going to actually close that and then show how you open it. So I'm going to go open folder. And here is the folder that I've created. You need to create a new folder um, anywhere on your, on your desktop will work. And then you need to open that folder by clicking open here. And then inside it, I've got the, I've dragged in the CSV file that we just downloaded. And in here is also some of the, uh, all the data that we downloaded from the Kaggle set, which we don't really need at the moment because we've got the one that we need, which is the scoring. Then you're going to want to copy the header row and take it over to ChatGPT. And then we're going to give it just an example row of data so it kind of knows what format works. I'll give it a couple actually. Let's give it four rows of data to have a look at. So this is the prompt I'm writing to get started. I have a spreadsheet of basketball data. These are the column headings in CSV format and I've pasted in the column headings. And I've gone here are the rows of data in CSV format and pasted in a few example rows for it to use. Finally, I'm asking it, do you understand? And I'm hoping after this prompt is sent, it's going to say, okay, I understand what you're trying to do here. I've read the CSV and I understand the format of the file. Great, ChatGPT has understood what we've put into it. And now we need to ask it for some prompt and completion pairs. The method I'm going to show you here is actually different to the one I did in my previous video. In my last video, the way I showed you how to generate these prompt and completion pairs using ChatGPT is actually not that scalable. So I've done a little bit of research and figured out how to get ChatGPT to write us a script to generate these pairs. And so we can do that with like hundreds of thousands of different pairs. So we're going to get stuck into that now. I'm telling ChatGPT that I want to fine tune GPT-3 using this data, write me a script to create prompt and completion pairs within this format. And then pasting some examples of the format that I want it back in. I'm actually gonna insert Python in here just to be extra clear. Okay, now after a bunch of messing around and, and tweaking this prompt just to get it just right, so you only have to do it once, um, this is the exact prompt that you guys will need to put in. I had to really coach it for, in order to give the right script out the first time so that you guys didn't have to mess around with it. So if you're following along, head down below to the description. I'm gonna be pasting these prompts into a Google Doc and leaving the share link for you guys to check out down below. So if you wanna get this entire prompt here that I've had to tweak quite a lot and you can follow along, then just hit down below and you can get it off Google Doc. After submitting that prompt, it gave me back the script that I need to get this data into the prompt and completion pairs. So once you have this code, all you need to do is copy it, head back over to VS Code, right click in here and create a new file. And we're gonna call it main.py. Paste this in, save the file. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure up here, this basketballdata.csv is the same name as this. So you can just click on here, press enter, paste it in there and save the file. So now we have the name thing all ready to go. And then we have it, uh, the script all ready to go as well. If you're not too familiar with programming and, and this basic sort of Python scripting, I'm gonna give you a quick run through of what's happening here so that you're not completely blind. Here we have our CSV data and this is comma separated values. So each one of these uh, at the top, you have the header and a comma separates it to the next column. So this is basically a condensed version of a spreadsheet that a computer can read. We have all of the headings up here and the separate separated by commas so the, the computer can read along and say okay this is a column and I've got a uh, extension installed on this uh, computer that allows me to see these a lot more easily I'm actually just going to show you that now 
And here it is, it's called Rainbow CSV. If you just install this quickly, then it's going to help you visualize the uh, CSV a lot more easily like I am here. So it's pretty straightforward. We have the header row and then underneath it is each of the uh, data points for that. Same as a spreadsheet, but it's just not formatted as nicely. So by using a method called string interpolation and uh, F strings, as you can see here, this F means that anything that you put inside of these curly brackets here is going to be uh, the value of this player headers index player. So this is referencing the player column here right at the end. So this player one, when you see that key player, it's referencing that in the script here. So for every row of data that we have coming along here, it's going to take this player column, which is the green thing here, and it's going to say, okay, I'm going to, because we're on this row, and it's going to work down every single row through the whole sheet. It's going to take the player value there and write the prompt with it. Write a summary of player values statistics. And then it's going to start building the completion for that row. And once again, it inserts the player's name and it says player name played, games played, games starting, game started of them. So it writes a big long sentence and summary of what the player's data is. And every time it comes to one of these blocks here, which has got the curly brackets, it's reaching into this file and plucking out the right value uh, as the script has made it. And then all it needs to do is append these prompt and completion pairs together into the format that we asked it for back in ChatGPT here, which is this format. And then it just saves it to a JSON and dumps it out for us to look at. If you're following along, I'm assuming you've got Python installed on your machine. If not, head to their uh, website and you can download the latest release of Python. Now that you understand the script, let's actually run it and then see what we get. The command to run a script in Python is Python and then the name of the script. So this case is main.py and hit enter. And then just like that, we have a prompt and completion pairs.json, which looks like a complete mess, but it is a ton of data all formatted exactly how we wanted it. If you'd like to see it a little bit more pretty, what we can do here is uh, type up prettier. And this one here, if you just install this quickly and then you head back to your uh, prompt and completion pairs, you can press option, uh, shift and F and then it will format it all up nicely like this. It looks really good and, and actually color codes it and understand it as JSON. So you're actually probably going to need to do this. So head over, grab that extension and come back and press option, shift and F. Now we can see the result of our hard work. So now for every player on that spreadsheet that we started with, we have the prompt, which is write a summary of Luka Doncic's statistics and then the completion, which uses ChatGPT summary uh, structure. And then it's simply uh, done it programmatically and used string interpolation, which is a Python feature to uh, pluck data out of that CSV file and put it into uh, the correct place to create this completion. I've just taken all of the code out of the main.py and put it into a new file called generate.py and saved it so that we can play around in the main.py file uh, for the next step. And now the fun part of taking all of these pairs and funneling them into GPT-3 and fine tuning it begins. To get started, you're gonna wanna head to beta.openai.com and you're gonna to wanna to head over to your personal section and view your API keys. Create an account if you haven't already, it's free. And then you're gonna to wanna to create a new API key. Here I am just creating a new one now. You can see all that on screen, but I'm gonna delete it, you cheeky guys in the, in the comments. I'm just gonna put that there to save it for later. Now we're on the documentation page for fine tuning by OpenAI. So we're gonna head down to the installation. We're gonna copy this and head over to our terminal and paste it in. I've already got everything uh, downloaded, of course, so the requirements are already satisfied for me, but it should start installing and show a progress bar for you. Now you need to copy this export string and just bring it back over to your main.py file. Let's copy this entire API key and then paste it within these quotations. Now we need to copy this entire thing, head back and paste this in. And this means that it's worked. We've exported the OpenAI key, so now it's ready to use for later. Next, we're gonna have to prepare our data. So you can copy this, head over to your terminal and delete all this. And this local file means we need to reference our prompt and completion file. And what we can do is come over here, copy all of this, head back, paste it in there and hit enter. I've just told it to prepare my data and it says here, your file appears to be in JSON, will be converted to json l which is the format it needs your file contains 250 prompt and completion pairs which is a pretty good uh starting little batch of data we have here now it gives you me a whole bunch of uh tips and tricks on how it can make the data better and get better results out of it so you probably want to have a read through this whenever you do this again and uh follow all of the instructions here because it's going to make your model a whole lot better for all of these pairs we should really have a, a suffix on it that is really unique and like a bunch of slashes and hashtags and stuff too there's a few things here like starting all of your completions with a white space character um, using a unique ending like pound signs uh, on the end of your completions all of these are really important to do we don't have time in the scope of this video if you'd like a little bit more information on that i can shoot a quick loom for you guys and put it in the in the uh, comment section below but for, for all purposes of this video we're good to go and we can hit n on this and it's going to convert it from json into json l and again, add a white space character to the beginning of the completion. It's going to do it for us, which is great. And yes. 
And just like that, we have it all made up into JSON L format, ready to put into the fine tuning process. Now we can actually fine tune our model. Uh, you need to head over here and copy this and uh, note that you can change the name of the base model that you're uh, starting from. So I've got this put in here, openai fine -tunes .create. I've put query at the end to specify the model that we want to use. And now I also need to put in the path to the file, which is all the data that it's gonna use to fine tune. So I've got to go over here, copy this entire thing, including the uh, suffix, and then paste this in here and then hit enter. So what this is now gonna do is upload all of that data, put you in the queue to fine tune, and then it's gonna uh, put all that data through their fine tuning method. And then the result is gonna be a fine tuned version of GPT-3 that is familiar with all of this basketball information. And in just a few minutes, we've got our fine tuned model complete. And here down on the bottom of the screen, you can see what the name of the model is called. You're gonna to wanna to copy that and save it for later. Now we need to head back to ChatGPT so that we can get a graphical user interface or GUI so that we can interact with this. Now to make things super easy, I'm actually just gonna grab the GUI script from the previous video that I did. So I'm gonna copy this. This is gonna be available in the uh, Google Doc down in the description. So head over there and grab that. This is gonna have all this uh, code that you need in order to run a uh, basic GUI so that you can interact with uh, your fine tune model. And we're gonna head back and here we have the name of our model that we wanna uh, cut that out of there and replace it within these uh, quotations here. Now, before you try to start this app up, make sure you save your main.py file before you start running it. Python main.py function ran, and just like that, we have a fine tuned GPT-3 window up and we can start giving it prompts. If I paste in one of these uh, prompts here, Jason Tatum statistics and paste them in. It's gonna give me out what is the beginning of this completion. Now, it seems to be having an issue where it's not writing out the entire completion. I'm not sure if that's an issue with my API key or a limit on the uh, API request, uh, or it's an issue within the uh, GUI itself, but I'm gonna have a dig into that uh, over the next couple of hours and get back to you guys in a bit. Hey guys, I just took a little look into why it's not completing the rest of it. It turns out it's a pretty simple fix. In the uh, completion line here, openai.completion.create, there's actually a, um, parameter that is a uh, max tokens that is uh, usually set to 10 or something just so that it limits how much you're charged for the api so it's, it's a built-in safety feature to stop you spending too much money all you need to do is come in and change this here by adding in this comma max tokens equals i've done 150 and that about that's about right for what we need so if i just run the python program again here bring it over another thing you need to note as well is that in the preparing process i didn't notice it at the time but what it did is trim out the writer summary part so as you can see here it says writer summary of luka Doncic statistics but what it did is because it was shared with all of the different prompts it actually cut it out in the preparation process so all our prompts are really is just their name and their statistics afterwards so if i take that over to our app here and put it in loads for a bit now i've actually retrained this on a davinci model uh, off camera just because uh, davinci is actually a lot better for recognizing what text you want so if you train with curie make sure you go back and uh, retrain with davinci it cost me about three bucks in order to get it retrained but definitely worth it and as you can see here we've got the entire prompt here which we expected and it's actually started giving us information on Carl Anthony Towns' statistics. So I'm not 100% sure why it's continuing down the list there, but uh, we got our result. We got our entire printout of Janice's statistics. So a better result than last time. So thanks for sticking around and we'll get back to the video. For the purpose of this video, I've shown you how to go from start to finish, how you can take your data, you can prepare that data, you can get it uh, put into a prompt and completion pairs, and then finally fine tune your version of GPT-3 so that you can start interacting with it. Of course, this is an extremely basic example and the, the understanding that this GPT-3 fine tune model has of this basketball topic is very limited and you'd need to give it uh, probably thousands and thousands more variations of these prompts. Once you've given it enough data, its understanding will be flexible of the topic and you'd actually be able to ask this basically any question and start being sort of specific about it and saying, hey, what are the three players playing for the X, XYZ team uh, who have the highest field goal percentage? And that's the kind of stuff that you'd eventually be able to get to given enough training data. So that's all for the video, guys. I've shown you how to go from start to finish and fine tuning a model with a bit of data. So if you have any questions about this or you've got stuck or something's not working on your computer, uh, drop it down below in the comments. Either I'll help you or someone else in the community will. The important thing about learning this process is that as an entrepreneur, you need to understand that this is what is going on behind the scenes for a lot of the startups that you're seeing. Just spending half an hour or an hour trying to understand this process is going to put you leagues ahead of other entrepreneurs entrepreneurs and other people trying to make money in this AR gold rush because you understand the underlying uh, technicalities of how these models are being created and fine-tuned. With an understanding of this process, you are going to be keeping a close eye out for data sources and understanding how you can get that data source and integrate it into a GPT-3 model or a GPT-4 model, which is coming up very soon. So I hope you got something out of this. Remember that down in the description, I'm going to have a Google Doc having all of the uh, prompts that I sent to ChatGPT and also the code. So uh, it should be pretty straightforward for you guys to have a play around with this. I really hope you enjoyed and got something out of it. If you like content like this, my name is Liam Motley and I'm a self-made serial entrepreneur from New Zealand, but now I'm living in Dubai. I make AI entrepreneurship focused content
content at least three times a week for aspiring and established entrepreneurs looking to get into the AI industry and make money in this AI gold rush that's happening right in front of us. So if that kind of stuff sounds interesting to you, head down below and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you don't miss my next one. If you've got something out of this video, please drop a like. It really helps my channel a lot. And of course, leave your comments down below and I'll be answering as many as I can. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and the best of luck to you as you navigate this AI gold rush. I'll see you next time.